Get out. Greetings, programs, and welcome to World of YouTube. Um, I had one or two questions from people, and I continue to get one or two questions from people on how exactly I do my video. So I thought I'd produce a short, uh, not even really a tutorial, but just a short video explaining what programs I use, what uh, what my, what my methodology is. And um, it, it don't take it as a recommendation. This is just what I do, and obviously I'll, I'll try and give one or two tips along the way. But uh, go out and do the research yourself. You know, look at what other people are doing. And I, I am by, by no means an expert at this. This is just what I do to get the uh, level of quality vids I do. And um, if it helps you guys, then then obviously that's a good thing. So uh, yeah, let's minimise that. Now, first thing you need to do when recording World of Tanks or any game is you need to be able to record the game footage. Now, what I use to do this is Bandicam, and there are, you know, there's there's Fraps is the other big one, and I can't remember specifically why I went with Bandicam. It was probably on somebody's recommendation, and I looked at it. And I thought, okay, and it wasn't too expensive. This is the the paid version, and I will say if you want to do World of Tanks videos. Uh, Provided your hardware is up to spec, then it's worth investing a little bit of money in stuff like Bandicam, stuff like editing software. It doesn't need to break the bank, but you know if you need to save up for it, then okay. But it's not like it's a massively expensive endeavor. The main expense is actually having a good enough computer. Um, but you can kind of get away with having a less good one. Mainly by um, lowering the, talking about World of Tanks specifically here, lowering the, the, the quality of the in-game effects, but also you can um, you can change what recording codec you're using. And at the moment I'm recording to XVID because I'm just recording my monitor basically, you can actually see the little status bar up there. Uh, but when I'm recording World of Tanks, I use Motion JPEG. Now this is a file, um, a codec rather, that it, it Basically, it uh, gives quite large files, and I'm talking about a gigabyte for a minute of video here. But the uh, the uh, amount of processing power required is relatively small. There is even um, less. Uh, th there's ones that have even bigger file sizes and require less processing pa power. But we're talking absolutely massive. We're talking tens of gigabytes for uh, not very much video. I don't have that kind of hard disk space. Uh, but what I, what I would say is, if you're doing, uh, it's useful if you're doing any kind of video recording to have uh, a hard drive with a relatively fast uh, read-write rate. Well, I was so not looking forward to saying that phrase, but I've managed to navigate it okay. You basically need to be able to write the video to file at a sufficiently fast rate, and uh, that cuts down on um, any unpleasant artifacts you might get in the video and it's quite you can see that's quite useful it tells you how much space you've got left on a drive and how long you've been recording for and all that kind of thing um the other thing i'll note about recording video is um i'm um i mean the settings i, I said about gigabyte a minute that's at 720p 1080p obviously that's going to be bigger files um it's less so with with xvid which is what i'm using right now but but yeah pre be prepared to work with large video files is, is what i'm saying you're going to have to have a fairly roomy hard drive for um recording good quality video too uh right what next um well the next thing obviously is audio you need to be able to record what you're saying because otherwise you're just sitting in a room alone talking to yourself and uh not that that's everything I do. Um, yeah, uh, this is Audacity. This is completely free. And what I do with my audio commentary is I record in this. And it's basically, um, you know, I just output it as an MP3 file when it's all done. And you need to go and download the MP3 codec, but it's pretty easy to find. Uh, it's um, There's some legal reason why they can't include it with the, the codec libraries in this, but uh, it, it's basically freely available. Uh, and of course you can use other things like um, Ogvorbis or Flack, uh, those are also available. It just depends whether your uh, video editing software of choice will actually support that. Now, um, it's fairly self-explanatory, you just hit the big red record button and you speak into the microphone and you make sure that your um, you might need to fill around with your Windows sound settings. 
Uh, this is obviously Windows 7 I'm using, and you just you know flick around and select which device. And once you've done that, it's all pretty easy. You might need to fiddle with levels somewhat, um, just depending on what your microphone quality is like. But um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just sort of click and drag, and you can do editing that way. You can delete sections, you can copy paste sections. Uh, it, it's pretty easy. You just fiddle around with it, and it's fairly easy to figure out what to do. So that's how I actually record stuff. Um, did I mention about frame rate? I was going to mention about frame rate. I'm so organized. Uh, it's a bit late when I'm recording this, so my brain is not at its sharpest, but hey, what's new? One thing I was going to point out about frame rate is basically you want to record. Um, that's the frame rate I'm recording at, and that's the frame rate I think I've been told that YouTube displays videos at, so there's really no point in having a higher frame rate. And what you want to do is you want to be recording your video at the same frame rate that you're then um, setting up your uh, your video editing software to actually handle. So uh, once this actually starts up, this is Vegas Movie Studio HD Platinum Gold Plus Super Amazing Blah Blah Blah. They really couldn't have shoved more names in there if they tried. It's basically the budget version of the full-blown Sony Vegas software. It's pretty easy to use. This is just what I happen to use. Um, I, I think, again, it was on a recommendation from somebody. And it's been okay. It's a little buggy. It crashes sometimes, so I would advise if you are using this, save it pretty often. This is not actually the latest version. Um, when I started doing the videos, I was actually still on Windows XP, and we're not talking that long ago, really. Uh, so this is the ver last version that would work within D Windows XP, and I've not gone up to the next version because I'm, you know, don't have the money basically, and this is perfectly good. So it looks a bit scary, but it's pretty much like um, it's. If you can use Windows Movie Maker, you can figure out how to use this. You've got video tracks, you've got audio tracks, and you basically, you know, this is the main video track here, this is all the, you can see all the video stuff. Um, this is the commentary track, and the video track and the game audio track are actually linked, so you can actually, whoop, you can actually, you just click, and, a lot of this program is just clicking and dragging, you get sliders for fading things out, and um, you can fade things at the start and the end, and it's pretty, uh, it, it's not hard to get your head around, and if there's anything you don't know how to do, the in-program help is actually um, this button here, show me how, it's actually quite nice. And any program like this, basically if you're stumped, you go look up a tutorial on YouTube and in about three or five minutes you'll know how to do it pretty much. So this is all, um, I find it fairly easy to use. Unfortunately there's not really much in the way of free video editing programs, you're probably going to need to pay out for something like this. Uh, this wasn't particularly expensive, it was about £30. Bandicam, I can't even remember how that much co that cost. It wasn't as much as Vegas, Sony Vegas, but it's still, you know, it's worth paying some money. Um, just if you've got the hardware in place, then it's worth playing a little bit for the right software. There is actually, and let me see if I can remember that there is actually one that looked promising that I will tell you guys about. You may know of the VLC player, um, Video Line Editor. And basically, the same team has, uh, they've started on, uh, here it is, VLMC, and it's basically an open source video editor, and I don't think this is even available as an alpha yet. But this is a project of which, you know, I am aware, I think it's probably useful for you guys to be aware of it, because there is going to come, become a point where you will be able to also get the video editing software for free. So. You know, bear this in mind, if you're thinking about doing YouTube but you don't have the money to put in right now, then uh, just keep your eye on this this page, videoland.org VLMC. So there you go, that's that's worth knowing about, I feel. So you should all be able to do that for free. Um, tips and advice on actual video editing? Um, well, it doesn't need to be this complicated for starters. I, I add um, time by doing all the caption stuff and also all the screen caps in game. You know that all adds time to the actual video editing process that I've, I've, my, you know, my workflow. Um, but it, it's reasonably straightforward. You know, you get, you get your commentary, you get your video track, and you just edit the two together and render the the, the thing. And hey, presto. 
you can look up YouTube. Um, the, the help section has actually got a page on their recommended video rendering settings. It took a bit of trial and error, but basically I found out to get their uh, recommended settings, which is H.264. You basically want to be using um, one of these, which gives you uh, what, MPEG-2 or what was the other one? Um, AAC? Um, AVC and AAC, that was it, main concept. And there's also a Sony one available as well. And you can, it looks a bit scary, but you can customize all these settings and give yourself uh, uh, render settings that actually match your, um, your, your, your desired output. And the main things, like I said, you want your project to have the same frame rate as you actually recorded at, and the same... Um, uh, aspect ratio. I am struggling for words tonight. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's really much more for, for me to add. You know, the, the, this is the process I use. Um, your hardware needs to be good enough. It, actually, if you have a fairly good hardware, you can record directly to the H.264 or you can record directly with the H.264 codec. Uh, that's possible on Radeon cards, on uh, NVIDIA cards. I'm not sure about other brands of cards but basically if your card is sufficiently new you may well be able to record directly to that codec and that will save you um, some processing time basically because you're kind of outputting in the codec that, that YouTube likes already. For me that's I, I can't do that my video card's not new enough but or it's not high spec enough but it's good enough for, for doing all this and it's good enough for getting 24 FPS so I don't think there's really much more to add. You know that that's that's how I record stuff. That's how I edit stuff. It all um, records separately and goes together in the editing. Um, the only reason I I do it separately is because Bandicam doesn't really give you many options in terms of sound recording, and I like having the extra flexibility, um, the options that Audacity gives me. It also means if I screw up the the uh, the uh, recording the video, I've still got the audio portion, or if I, you know, vice versa, if I screw up the commentary, I don't need to go and re-record the video, I've actually got the video separate from the audio, so I'm not screwing everything up together, so that's another reason I do it that way. So, um, yeah, hopefully, somebody somewhere out there has found this useful. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below, I will endeavour to answer them. Bear in mind, I am no technical expert, this is just the stuff I've figured out how to do, and I'm I'm not quite 100% happy with where I am in terms of video quality. I would like to do 1080p ideally, but uh, the main the main thing that's stopping me is my internet connection. I can only uh, upload so much, and because I'm on ADSL, so my download speeds are vastly better than my upload speeds. You need at least DSL or cable or even fiber to be able to um, upload stuff really quickly and in high quality. The, the better your internet connection, the better quality videos you can upload. And obviously it depends on the quality that you can record stuff in, but that, I think, upload speeds are, are going to be the main bottleneck for a, a few people anyway. So if you found this video useful, um, you can obviously hit the like button, you can say so in the comments. Like I said, if you have any questions you can ask, ask in the comments, I will do my best to answer, but no promises. And um, yeah, as always, stay tuned for more.